Assalamu alaikum. This is the fourth video on translation of foreign affiliate financial statements. In this video, we will continue explaining forward contract as a hedging instrument. We will talk about the cash flow hedge and then we will solve an illustration and a problem. But in the beginning of this session, I would like to thank my son, Muhammad Abdullah Khan, who gifted me an iPad along with all the necessary accessories without which making these videos would not have been possible. I would like to thank Nabiya Khan for helping me out in preparing these awesome slides. I would like to thank my wife Samina for her care, encouragement and constant support who allowed me to use time for her in making this video. Recall in the second video of this series, we talked about the kinds of forward contracts. We solved an illustration on and an exercise on foreign currency transaction. In the third video of this series, we explained a fair value hedge and solved an illustration and an exercise on fair value hedge. In this video, we will talk about cash flow hedge and solve an illustration and an exercise on cash flow hedge. The primary purpose of cash flow hedge accounting is to link the income statement recognition of a hedging instrument and a hedged transaction whose changes in cash flows are expected to offset each other. A cash flow hedge deals with forecasted transaction. Forecasted transactions means the company is planning for some transaction in the future. The company may be planning to buy or sell and the transaction will be in a foreign currency. So there is no commitment because if there is a commitment, then it becomes a fair value hedge. We have already talked about it in the previous video. So there is no commitment. Under cash flow hedge, the company will be paying or receiving for a future transaction. Unlike fair value hedge, the income statement is not involved in recording gains or losses. Rather, if you can recall the second video while explaining kinds of forward contracts, it was stated that unlike fair value hedge, gains or losses in case of cash flow hedge are not recorded in the income statement. Rather, first it will be recorded in OCI, other comprehensive income, and then reclassified into earnings. So two things to be remembered in case of cash flow hedge. Number one, any gains or losses will be recorded in other comprehensive income statement. It's a forecasted transaction, so there is no firm commitment. This will be explained by solving an illustration and an exercise. On December 1, 2010, a firm estimates that at least 5,000 units of inventory will be purchased from a company in the United Kingdom during January of 2011 for 500,000 euros. The transaction is probable and it is to be denominated in euros. Sales of the inventory are expected to occur in the six months following the purchase. The company enters into a forward contract to purchase 500,000 euros on January 31, 2011 for 1.01. So by using the forward contract, the firm is assured of paying 505,000 regardless of changes in the exchange rate. If the exchange rate were to drop below 1.01, the firm would lose. But if the exchange rate were to exceed 1.01, .01, the firm would be better off using the forward contract. The entry on December 1, 2001 
2010 sorry to record the forward exchange contract will be forward contract receivable from exchange dealer debit and dollars payable to exchange dealer is credit one month later on the balance sheet date that is 31st of december 2010 the change in the value of the forward contract will be you see 1.01 it decreases to 0.99 recall that if the exchange rate drops the firm would lose so the general entry is going to be foreign exchange loss debit and forward contract receivable from exchange dealer credit and we have to write down other comprehensive income because this is a cash flow hedge notice that unlike the fair value hedge there is no offsetting firm commitment entry since this is a forecasted transaction the exchange gain or loss is reported in com other comprehensive income and will affect the income statement when the inventory is eventually sold on the balance sheet date the forward contract is reported as a liability as its fair value of 10000 and the offsetting amount is reported in stockholders equity in accumulated other comprehensive income as a loss on january 31 2011 that is the transaction and the settlement date and you can see that on this date the spot rate is the forward rate as well and again it has declined and if the exchange rate decreases the firm will lose again so the general entry is foreign exchange loss is debit and foreign currency receivable from exchange dealer is credit now we are in a position to settle our account uh, you can see that the pay bill is 505,000 and we are going to pay this amount of 505,000 dollars pay bill is debit and cash is credit in the receivables we have a balance of 490,000 and that is what we are going to receive and when we receive this becomes an investment and from this investment we are going to uh, make the purchase so inventory is going to be debit by 490,000 and investment in foreign currency is going to be credited by 490,000 and that's how we settle the investment account now suppose on in February, the inventory is sold for 600,000. Then cash is debit and inventory is credit for, uh, sorry, sales is credit for 600,000. At the same time, inventory will be credit and cost of goods sold will be debit for 490,000. And finally, we are going to reclassify other other comprehensive income into into our earnings and we are going to debit the cost of goods sold income statement by 15000 and foreign exchange loss will be credited by 15000 next let us solve an exercise on cash flow hedge on 1st of December 2008, a US firm plans it plans to purchase. The company has a plan to purchase. It did not make a commitment. It didn't sign a contract to purchase. A piece of equipment with an asking price of 100 franc in Swiss uh, currency. During January of 2009, the transaction is denominated in euros. On December 1st, the company entered into a forward contract to buy 100,000 francs for 1.01. So the transaction is denominated in Swiss franc. 
so the company bought a contract to buy 100,000 francs at the rate of 1.01. Now, since the company bought 100,000 Swiss francs at 1.01, it means the commitment for the whole transaction is 101,000. So when the company buy the piece of equipment, it is guaranteed a price of 101,000. The spot rate and the forward rates are given over here in this table. The company plans to buy on 1st of December 2008. So the spot rate on this date don't have any relevance as there are no purchases on sales or on this date. There is only a plan. The relevant rate is the forward rate on 1st of December. 2008 as the company entered into a forward contract on this date. Similarly, the spot rate on 31st December 2008 is irrelevant in case of this exercise, although the forward rate on this date is relevant. On January 1st and February 1st, the spot rate is 1.04 and this is relevant as it is the settlement date. So first of all, forward contract will be recorded by we are going to debit the asset forward contract receivable from exchange dealer will be debit and we will credit dollars payable to exchange dealer and this is the fixed account. This will be posted in the T account as you can see over here and since the company is paying, so pay bill is the fixed amount as the company is committed to pay this money and forward contract receivable from the exchange dealer is the hedge let us now see what happens on 31st december 2008 on 31st december 2008 the forward rate is 1.02 the rate has increased from 1st of December 2008. So the company has again, as had they waited for 31st December, the pay bill would have been 102,000. So the company saved 1,000 by entering into a forward contract on 1st of December 2008. And the general entry is foreign currency receivable from exchange dealer debit and foreign exchange gain other comprehensive income is credit. Let us see how or rather what happens on 31st of January 2009. Now on 31st January 2009, that is the settlement date. So the spot rate of 1.04 on this date is also the forward rate. So the company again gained 0 0.02 and the general entry is forward currency receivable debit, foreign exchange gain, other comprehensive income is credit. And now we are ready to settle the accounts and let us see how we do that. Now we are going to pay the fixed amount, our pay bills 101,000 and when we pay the pay bill are going to be debit and the cash is going to be credit the receivables on this date is 104000 and when we receive this becomes an investment uh, so investment is debit and foreign currency receivable is credit and we are going to buy the equipment for 104000 now what is interesting is that we have paid cash for 101,000 and we have got an equipment for 104,000. And the reason is that the company has gained on the forward contract by 3,000. So a gain of 3,000 help them to buy an equipment of 104,000 by paying 101,000 only. 
So this completes the fourth part of our explanation on foreign currency transaction. Remember, effective questioning brings insight which fuels curiosity, which cultivates wisdom. If you have any question regarding this session, then please don't hesitate to ask in the comment box or by email and inshallah I will reply you back. Happy learning.